And for me, when that clicked in, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. And realizing that we walking this earth, like being in these human bodies are essentially like these cells on her and everything that we are and everything that we do is, is in connection to her. Yeah. How can I accept my inner winter and you know, work with the blossoming of my inner spring and celebrate my summer and receive the lessons in my harvest. Welcome to It's Not What You Think, the podcast that takes you on a transformative journey to rewrite your story of greatness and reawaken your soul's purpose. I'm your host, Celine Costa, a subconscious mind expert, master coach, and believer in the limitless power and magic that lives within all of us. My intention in this podcast is to propel you into your next level of success so that you are free to create the life that your heart most desires. Through deep, actionable insights, personal stories, and world-class guests, I'll provide you with the tools, strategies, and resources you need to unlock the fullest expression of who you're meant to be in this lifetime so that you can consciously design a reality that is beyond what you could have ever dreamed of. Join me on this journey to personal growth and evolution, and let's live our lives in accordance with our highest soul's calling. This podcast is your weekly check-in to help this path become more simple, obtainable, and fun. Thank you for tuning in today, and now let's dive in. Hello, everyone, and welcome to It's Not What You Think. I have a very special guest with me today in person, which is personally such a treat for me. We have Mia Magic, who the name reveals is a very magical woman. So I'll let me introduce herself in a moment, but I wanted to share how I personally met her. So fun fact, today's actually the first time we meet in the flesh. Um, I found her online, I believe around a year ago, because she just kept showing up in you know friends that I have. We have a lot of mutual friends in the community. And Mia would show up and be tagged here. Then Mia would show up and be tagged here. And now I'm like, okay, who is this lady? And when I entered Mia's world, I felt so much resonance with her for reasons that are become, going to become very obvious as this podcast goes on. But what I really loved about Mia was your resonance with the planet and the way that you are a guardian of the earth, which is a path that I'm personally um, venturing into and have been for the past year. And your unapologeticness, if that's a word, <laughs> mm -hmm. of really standing up for what it means to be a powerful woman in her intuition in the modern world and bringing that ancient wisdom into the modern world. And so, anytime that you're posting, and you know, we we've connected and talked over the past year, um, I just I, you feel like an ally, and that's mm. what I really love about you and everything that you do. So that's how I personally met Mia. But Mia, I want to hand it over to you, and if you can share with us uh, a little bit more about who you are, whatever's flowing in the moment, because yeah. I know that's a, <laughs> it is not a simple answer, and mm -hmm. what it is that you do, and I know, you know you're know you the headmistress of intuition, but I'll, I'll leave it to you to share with us. Yeah, totally. So my biggest mission is really just being a voice for the earth. We've mm -hmm. come to treat the planet like this sort of disembodied resource to just take from, and I relate to her as a sentient deity. Mm -hmm. She is like this massive planetary being upon whose skin we're really like bacteria. And so we call her Mother Earth. I believe she's the mother that we all share. She birthed us all. And so my work is really about helping us understand that we are not only her children, but we're also reflections of her. We're emanations of her. You know, this earthly body, our bones are like the stones in the mountains. We've got rivers of blood, which is the water within us running through our veins. We breathe in the wind that we exchange with trees and plants. And then we have electricity beating our hearts every single moment and we're not plugged into anything and that is a reflection of the sun and the light and the fire. And then there's this ineffable fifth sacred thing, the fifth element that is the spirit that unites all of that. And too often, I think in the modern world, you know, in indigenous cultures and civilizations, which is why I say bringing the ancient way to the modern day, they related to all of the elements as conscious vibrations, frequencies, energies, even perhaps like anthropomorphizing them, right? The cloud gods and the sun gods and the mountain gods. And I truly believe that when you connect to these elements, not only within, but all around you, you begin to form a beautiful relationship with them and they've become sort of voiceless in our world. And so my mission and part of my work and the wisdom that I share, which is what the word witch means, is really about 
remembering how to listen to those voices, like in Pocahontas, you know? <laughs> Paint with all the colors of the wind, sing with all the voices of the mountains, and they really do have voices. And so it has been an incredible blessing, a healing element, a massive pillar, perhaps really the foundation of my business and my abundance, just being willing to hear and listen to them mm -hmm. and, and let myself be guided by these elements that have really carved and and supported and empowered our species since the beginning of time. And it's really just in the last few hundred years that we've stopped relating to them in mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, what you're sharing is, it really hits me deeply because about a year and a half ago, and, and I don't talk about this often, but it feels Perfect. like this is the space. I tend to have that effect <laughs> on people. Mm -hmm. This is the space, mm -hmm. but in the past year and a half, I've been low key studying under a teacher and, and doing uh, earth priestess temple arts. And you mm -hmm. know, it's been this, this ongoing process of learning how to relate to the elements and what you're sh sharing about us being a bacteria on earth, but really seeing mother earth or Gaia, however we want to refer to her, um, as a sentient like living being who's going through her own evolutionary process. Yeah. And for me, when that clicked in, I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. And realizing that we walking this earth, like being in these human bodies are essentially like these cells on her and everything that we are and everything that we do is, is in connection to her. Yeah. And it's been a process because, you know, on one hand there, I have really deep conditioning in the matrix, having grown up in that very patriarchal context mm -hmm. and being very, very conditioned in that way. And part of my life's journey and what I also do for work is helping people break open and decondition themselves to come back to the essence of who they're here to be. Mm. And my own personal journey for that has really been to recreate this, this um, connection to, to the planet so much so that my year, my word for this year is embody so I can come back into my body because I recognized all the ways that we become disconnected. And I remember at first it was difficult for me to justify the time and energy I was spending doing these studies because mm -hmm. the narrative, which I'm yeah. sure you're familiar with, was, but I'm busy. I, how am I going to run my business? How am I going to do the things I need to do at work? And one of the things that has really br started to bridge for me in very powerful ways in the past six months or so is that the more in connection and understanding and relation that I come with the elements and the earth and the more I open myself up and um, sink into the rhythms of what it means to be a woman, the more actually business is flowing for me, <laughs> which I know you're giggling because you're like, yeah, welcome to my world. But it's been this space of, oh my God, I, I couldn't think it because it's in the mental body. The mental body is like, this is ridiculous. This makes no sense. But my embodiment journey has shown me that actually the planet is my fountain of abundance. And I know you speak a lot about that and that you, this is something that you, you know, you're not in. And I know that this is something that you've got a lot of codes on. Mm -hmm. And um, I know when I coach clients and when I sit with them, this is almost always for a woman who's very ambitious, high performing, um, grown up in, you know, the, the patriarchy in the matrix, almost always the biggest objection to, I need to rest. I'm on my moon. I need to take time off is always, but I can't because I need to do this, this and that. So I'm curious if you could demystify for us, um, what it actually means to be in abundance and prosperity as it relates to this guardianship of the earth that I believe, and I know you believe as well, each one of us has a responsibility to take care of this planet. How do we do this and quote unquote, be successful um, in, in business? Well, there's so many channels we could go down, <laughs> but the, the main things are that one, nature is the ultimate expression of abundance. Oh, ultimate. Oh yeah. The ultimate. There's okay. nothing more abundant than nature, her fruits, her flowers, her waters, all of it. So that's the first thing. And guess what nature does? She has cycles and seasons. She's got different weather. She's got a whole section of the year where in most places, all the leaves fall off and nothing's growing. And she's chilling literally and figuratively. She's not shaming herself. She's not like, oh my God, I'm such a fucking idiot. I shouldn't be resting right now. I can't believe I'm having winter. This is so horrible. What am I gonna do? I would better rush and hurry up and have spring. No, she's like, it's winter. It's winter. And when I'm ready, 
I'll reemerge and new sprouts and new blossoms will rise mm. for me. And then when it's summer, I'm gonna be out and I'm gonna be hot and I'm gonna be sexy and I'm gonna play and I'm gonna do all these things. And then once I've learned all this new information from spring and from summer, wow, I'm gonna harvest that information. That's gonna become my wisdom. That's gonna become my new embodied power because it's not just knowledge. It's not just information. I'm harvesting those lessons. That's what the harvest season is for, right? These sort of last fruits, like some of our stone fruits and, and the squashes and the gourds and things that will carry us through the winter, right? We can, we preserve, we make jams and, and gourds and squash will last months all the way through the winter carry us through so that harvest season and the plants that are alive during harvest season are just a metaphor for us being able to take our new information our new wisdom and allow it to carry us through the challenging times the hard times the dark times the lonely times that are like the winter in our own cycles and in our lives mm. now the other thing is is that if you wanna be truly successful, right? There's, there's all different kinds of definitions of success. Some people's definition of success looks like living off grid with a dope community and just like growing their own food and having cool yurts and little dome earth ships and like hallelujah bless, right? Some people it's like mansions and yachts and cars and whatever. But all those material things that I've found, I've had all the things. I've, tasted all the different flavors of success. I grew up in a very abundant family, but I was raised by people who never had flashy cars, never were materialistic. Our money was used to support philanthropic efforts, to take mm -hmm. amazing trips, cultural experiences, real estate and education. It was like, that was what my parents spent money on. So I watched very abundant people care for and steward money in a way that was really responsible to the planet. So that was a great blessing for me. Then they cut me off after college and I was just fucking broke and like lived out of my car. So I also had that experience, you know, <laughs> but what I have found from most people who strive for just the societal definition of success, which tends to be more based on material wealth, they feel fucking empty inside. They are so fueled by scarcity and not enoughness. And I need to have this thing. If I don't have the Louboutins or I don't have the Chanel bag or I don't drive the Lamborghini or I don't have a 30,000 square foot house, like I'm not good enough. I haven't made it. And so we can call them financially successful and that's great. But what is that success doing for them within? And what's happening in our world is even like, especially women entrepreneurs, when we're saying I can't rest, I can't take time off. I have to X, Y, or Z. That is scarcity. That is all from the frequency of scarcity. The same as those of us who are like still buying shit from Amazon. We're like, oh my God, it's only 20 bucks on Amazon. Do you understand why something is $20 on Amazon? Because of the slave labor that's going into the production of it, because of the disadvantaged minorities and people in third world countries who this is the only way they have to make money. And like that's the energy that you're putting into it, the desecration of the rainforests and the carbon footprint that Amazon has. Like we think, oh, we're getting like a good deal on something. Mm -hmm. But when we're not being conscientious of like, oh, I'm gonna, instead of buying a rattle on Amazon, I can see your beautiful rattle. I'm gonna buy a rattle that's handmade by this person in this small town from this tree that fell down, this wood that was you know, gonna go into decomposition and they choose to pick this beautiful like stick up and turn it into a wand or a rattle or a piece of art or something like that. The vibration, the energy of the reciprocal relationship between the planet and that person or that artisan and then you and that person and that artisan and then you and the thing that they made, that's abundance. And mm -hmm. too often we're just trapped in, we turn you know, especially like women, for me, I experienced this when I first started making money is I no longer had financial scarcity. So I turned time into mm. scarcity. It's like, I don't have enough time. Oh my God, I have to blah, 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 blah. like, it's all scarcity. It's the same as abundance is a conscious vibration that you can attune to in the universe that you can experience within yourself. You can align with and, and resonate with and operate from just like scarcity. 
you can have billions of dollars and feel scarcity within yourself all the time. Mm. And so that's a big piece that I work on with my clients is like, how can I accept my inner winter and you know, work with the blossoming of my inner spring and celebrate my summer and receive the lessons in my harvest. And the most important thing to acknowledge is that sometimes you can go through all four seasons in a day. And it's okay mm. to be like, oh, I'm gonna take my two hour slow morning and like give myself just nourishment and ease. And then I'm gonna like have a coffee and have a meeting or do a podcast and like, okay, great. And then I'm gonna go have lunch with a friend and we're gonna have so much fun. And then I'm going to go home and I'm going to like do a follow up with someone and I'm going to, you know, or I'm going to journal or I'm going to like make a beautiful meal for myself and my partner or we're going to make love because I know that that's important and it grounds me and then I'm going to go to sleep and you can have a four season kind of day and it's, it's great and it's easy, but that's the biggest thing that I notice with women is we just, particularly running businesses or, or entrepreneurial is we just are living in an illusion that's that's not true and not real. And most men that are still living in that illusion, they're not happy either. They're not fulfilled. They don't feel really good, you know? And, and that's because of all of these patriarchal systems that have told men not to cry and not to feel and not to take a rest. Like, you have to be productive. And that's a big thing I'm sure we can get into. But, you know, men... There is this witch wound. It's the wound to our wisdom. It's the wound to our magic. It's the wound to our power. And people think that men don't feel it, but they were the ones who were supposed to protect all of the women who got mm -hmm. burned and tortured mm -hmm. and raped and dragged from their homes. And if that was your daughter or wife or mother or cousin or sister, and your only duty was to protect her and someone came and stole her from you and, you know, called her evil and then killed her, that leaves a lasting mark on your relationship to purposefulness mm -hmm. and to duty and to what you're here for. And so everyone experiences it. This, this modern world, we have just been stripped from our true nature, which is a connection to and reflection of nature itself. And that's ultimately why I think all of us in some way or another are, are just battling scarcity because we've forgotten that nature is abundance and instead we just take and take and take from her and don't give anything back or even consider the implications of our habits and our behaviors and our our you know the ways we buy things and consume and it's just like so much consumption because people feel empty inside so that's a lot of pieces of the mm -hmm, mm -hmm, of the answer mm -hmm. but that's that's primarily why I work with people on like seasonal energy and creating balance and finding what is my inner masculine need and what is my inner feminine need and how can I become sacred union within myself mm -hmm. and alchemize the two powers of those, those poles and mm -hmm. exist on my own personal mm -hmm. spectrum of mm -hmm. what works best for me. Yeah, there's, there's so many beautiful pieces of what you shared. And um, I've been doing, a, you know, I was studying under a Tantra teacher for about a year doing a Tantra practitioner training within myself. And so I, within this time, as this earth piece is coming up for me, also the energetics of how do I actually create that union within myself and that balance, um, there's something you said that really struck me and I find to be so resonant is that once the money scarcity gets resolved because the money's coming in, so to say, then it just gets transferred into time. And I know that, you know, work. I work with a lot of very successful women where money isn't necessarily yeah. a thing. They're mm -hmm. not like, oh, I need to pay my bills this month or I need to make money this month. Yeah. And so that is comfortable. And what I keep noticing is, and what I always tell my clients is a pattern is a pattern is a pattern. It doesn't matter if that mechanism is existing within you, it's gonna manifest in whatever way it does. And what I'm noticing is that, um, yeah, there is this story, this collective narrative around my schedule's too full. Um, I can't take this time off. Um, there's no wiggle room here. And in my own business, I know that I've uh, the way that I've um, worked with that, even though it's not as cyclical, is to make sure I have a week off every month, to make sure every three months I have a month off, and to ensure that that gets baked in. But w even within that, I I've been like, okay, how do I actually honor the cycles within that container because we can yeah. only create structure for so much before we just need to honor the flow. So, you know, I'm, I'm curious when it comes, because I, I love this concept and I completely 100% resonate with it. Anytime I'm feeling in scarcity, I need to come back into the earth. I need to come back yep. into nature. And immediately I just feel that return, that <laughs> reciprocity. Yeah. 
And also, I know realistically that many people, especially people that are listening to this, they're not, you know, they're not currently, for example, I know you and I, before this, this um, we started this recording, we were talking about how important it is for us to live in a home where there's no traffic, there's no like noise pollution and how we get to have that. And I know that that's also not always available to everyone where they can be living in the middle of nature with no noise pollution, with um, no disruptions. And, um, you know, what I would love to ask you for your wisdom on is for people who are listening is really to get this understanding. If you are somebody who is, yeah, I hear what you're saying and I believe it, but like, how do I begin to start to reconfigure my life to be able to be in sync with nature? And I know this is a really big question, but um, whatever comes through, like, what, what is it a way for us to start to weave this in, especially if we can't go from zero to 60 all at once? Yeah, I mean, putting plants in your home, like a lot mm. of people don't even have plants in their home. So I, the first thing I do every morning before I turn my phone on, like I was awake for an hour and a half this morning before my phone came off of airplane mode. Mm -hmm. And I went outside and yes, I did have nature to look at. I looked at the sky and the clouds and the trees all around. And I like to pee on the earth because I don't like to waste water or like toxify the beautiful water systems. Like in the Western world, we defecate into water that billions of people would kill to drink. So like mm -hmm. I just tend to be mindful of all of that. Now I do understand that's challenging for someone who lives in an apartment, but guess what? Every major city that I've ever been to, within about 20 or 30 minutes outside, there is nature. There are state or national parks. There are reserves. There is a wildlife preserve. There's something. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, this is a classic Dalai Lama quote. If you think that you do not have time to meditate for one hour in a day, you should meditate for two hours. Mm -hmm. And so if you say, I don't have time to do X, Y, or Z, I can't do this, then like that's exactly what you should do. And I love to work outside. Like last night, I stayed from like three hours before sunset. I went out. I responded to messages, I read a book, I wrote some emails, and then I was literally, I'm writing, my Oracle deck is due on the 19th, so I'm writing all these cards, and I just sat outside under the stars, like working outside. Mm -hmm. And so even just being outside is so nice, but, but there is nothing more important than making the time for yourself to go out and find a tree that you wanna connect with. One of my old clients in New York City, she didn't even leave the city. She would just go to Central Park. And I was like, find a tree that you resonate with, that you connect with, that you want to sit beneath and create a relationship with it. And it was so healing for her, especially people, a lot of women, you know, will have mother wounds or issues with their mothers who made them feel bad or like they weren't enough. And so that's why they kind of are always like pushing and forcing. Sometimes it's a father too. Obviously, we have this, you know, disembodied, punitive, masculine energy as like God instead of literally every single thing around us and every eye of every stranger and every breath and every heartbeat being God. But I really, when I work with people who have mother wounds, I'm like, so go talk to the mother, the great mother, and reconnect with her and try and listen to her and see what she has to offer you. And so it's like that Dalai Lama quote, if you think you don't have time to get out to nature, then there's literally nothing more important for you to do. Mm -hmm. And take a weekend, take a, a day with your partner or a girlfriend or your children or yourself and just drive out to, you know, some people are desert people. Like I'm not a desert person. I'm a forest person. I'm a river or lake creeks and streams, mountains and meadows of wildflowers kind of person. So I would never live in a place like Phoenix or Dubai or something like that. But even those places, there's so much beauty in desert energy if that's where you live, right? So wherever you are, whatever type of terrain you live on, even, you know, the people who live in Kansas and Nebraska, like those great plains, there is beauty. There's beauty. You just have to commit to going and finding it. And I promise you, I guarantee you, if you go out and spend even just 20 quiet minutes without your phone laying on the earth in a place where she has been left to her own devices and you just be for a minute, 
something will shift and something will change and you will realize how valuable that is. Mm -hmm. And then you will know that it is worth making the commitment and worth making the effort and, and spending the time, taking the time, but really it's receiving the time, right? It's giving yourself permission to receive that sacred pause and that winter moment or like turning it into the spring or the celebration. Like I'm going to reward myself with an hour out in nature. You know, that's something that I do so often. It's like, oh, okay, I got my little things done. Like I'm going out, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's, those are great ways to start. Understand that you are the elements. Put plants in your home. Don't turn your phone on first thing in the morning. Maybe even don't sleep with your phone in your bedroom. And then when you wake up, I'm like looking at the little plant here. Even if you don't have access to nature, just looking at something green and alive, not like a fake plant, but like a living plant as the first thing that you look at in the morning can help you remember your connection to nature. It's got veins running through it, just like you do. It's sourcing itself from the sun, just like we do. It's connected to the earth through roots, just like our little toes. And so those very, very simple ways of just remembering that we are part of nature can be so nourishing and so transformative that then you do remember mm -hmm. more of your inner abundance and can therefore receive the gift of that time mm -hmm. and, and make it a priority. Mm -hmm. And I love that reframe of it's not about you not having time, it's about you creating time to receive yeah. the gift of time. And I know that part of my personal practice and something that I encourage my clients as well, especially those who are like in big corporate settings, it's like just take 15 minutes, take your socks off and go in the grass yeah. and just receive from the grass. And you know, one of the things that, well here maybe it's not as easy when I'm traveling, but when I'm in Bali um, and my office is just 10 steps from, from the grass, I will frequently go in my 15 minute breaks and I will just get my womb on the earth and I'll just breathe yep. and just lay face down on the earth, like just yes. giving my stress, giving whatever's not like conducive in my body. I just give it back to the earth and she receives it and she supports. And, yep. um, and you know, one of the things that I love about this newfound relationship that I am creating with the earth as well is just the amount of just infinite compassion of this being. I mean, it, it, it like has brought me to my knees many, oh, many yeah. times, just how much she continues to give and to give and to give and to model for us what unconditional love looks and feels like, you know? And, and whenever I'm feeling, okay, I'm really stressed or like there's a lot going on and I just lay there, I can just feel her going like, give it to me, sweetie. Like I yeah. got you, you know? And there's been so many times even in ceremony where I'm like, I can't do this. And I will literally just, just I remember one specific time in ceremony where I'm like, I can't. And I had to leave it. And I was just face planted onto the grass, just feeling her breathe life back into me yeah. and like take the burdens, you know? Yeah. And, and so it's really important and to not only to receive from her, but to be in a, a symbiotic relationship with this planet. And I'm realizing even as I make decisions in my business and I think about how do I want to distribute profit? How do I want to grow this company? Um, there's now that thinking of how do we make this sustainable and how can I give back to the community? How can I give back to the planet as I grow in my abundance? How do I infuse it back in? And it is a learning curve. I, I, I must admit that totally. for somebody who didn't grow up with that, um, yeah. with that template, it is something like learning new information, but yeah. it is so important, I believe, in the current state that we're in, in the planet, in business, both women and men, that we must find ways to expand and grow in um, harmony and in sustainability to the planet. Because yeah. the more we do that, I believe our abundance is absolutely infinite. And the way we can prosper sure. and expand in like in allies, as allies with Gaia, is just absolutely infinite and beyond what our mind can comprehend. So, And that's the yeah. wholeness of abundance. That's mm -hmm. the beyond the financial prosperity. Like, we will feel better as a species. Look at the epidemics of obesity and children on all of these crazy medications and suicide mm -hmm. and child abuse and, like, depression, anxiety, like, all of these things. Why do we think that's happening? Because we're disconnected from the planet. Because, like, mm -hmm. we're not aware of our oneness with her and the best thing like I loved what you just shared because the best thing is she's never going to punish you for how long it's been she's never going to be mad at you and be like oh well fuck you I haven't heard from you in a while like I don't want to talk to you she goes oh 
my child, welcome home to my arms. Thank mm. you so much for returning to me. Oh, I'm, I'm so happy to see you. And she will always embrace you and always appreciate that you are back. And ultimately, you know, we call what investments do appreciation because that is a code for growing your abundance in every form, Mm -hmm. in every form is appreciation. Appreciate her, appreciate your body, appreciate your life, appreciate the food that you get to eat, appreciate your communities and your Mm -hmm. friends. And yeah, it's really, there's just, there's just so much, but she will, she will heal you. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is that you've got going on, she will heal you. Mm -hmm. And that is just truly, I think one of the most important things that we've forgotten that, that if we remember that, and you know, there's all these amazing companies nowadays. I invested in a diaper company called Hero Diapers that puts mushrooms into the baby poop and then the mushrooms eat the diaper and then everything else in the diaper bag and then eat the diaper bag and then eat the plastic in the landfill. There are you know, um, bubble wrap and, uh, packaging materials that are being made out of mycelium, out of seaweed, out of old lamb's wool. There's all these things that if we would just wake up and stop mindlessly doing things Mm -hmm. like packaging stuff in bubble wrap or, you know, sending a package in plastic as opposed to in paper or like a recycled you know, mushroom box, all these cool things. I'm like, oh, I've got so many more investments to make, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, because there's all these amazing companies coming out right now. We just have to shift our way of doing things. Mm -hmm. And we have to acknowledge that spending a little bit more money, because money is only one form of energy, one form of currency, one form of abundance. When we are willing to place resources or financial abundance in alignment with our values Mm -hmm. and we use that word value as something that like we feel like is important it's not again not just a financial value it's like oh my values are sustainability harmony with the planet and so when we speak to and embody our values with what we do with our money then those things become more valuable and they become Mm -hmm. more important and more people begin to value them because we're, you know, as a microcosm, right? If you look at the holographic universe and the quantum nature of reality, it's like, I'm the only one here. So if I'm putting my money where my mouth is, where my values are, then I'm going to start seeing a response in the macrocosm of this being something that's valuable. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And you know, speaking of the embodiment piece and the healing piece, there's all these little pieces that mm-hmm. that um, you've spoken to that leads us to this road that I want to also unpack, which is this, um, you know, the word that a word that you often use mm-hmm. that is a really big part of your work as well, which is witch, right? And I know that there's a lot of misconception. It's almost like, you know, I was sharing with the, this with you before this episode, which is on one hand, there's like, ooh, witch. And on the other hand, it's like, oh my God, I'm a witch. I'm a witch. I'm a witch. And there's like this, almost like this hype around this word, but I, I would really Thank love Thank goddess. To- <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Let there's- there be hype instead of burnings on pyres. Yes, you know? for yeah. sure. But what I'd like to do is just get into the core of what this word, like if we can deconstruct yeah. what this word actually means in your world, what it means to you and anyone who's listening and, and maybe has a preconceived notion of what this is, what this isn't, to offer them some pathways of how they can perceive this word, what it what it looks like, what it actually means in its cornest natures. I know you have a lot of wisdom to share around that. So I'd love to unpack and open it up for people to yeah. ponder on. Yeah, so the word witch comes from like old Germanic and old Scottish languages, which are like sort of the same origin, and which means wise. It's where Wicca, wicked, wizard, wisdom, witch, all of those words come from the same origin, and it just meant wisdom, one who sees, one who knows. And the difference between knowledge or information and wisdom is that it's something we've learned through our life experience. It's not just like, okay, someone told me this thing and then I'm regurgitating it. It's like, oh, someone told me this thing and I experienced something where I needed to use that piece of information and I witnessed myself experience life or recover or respond in a different way Mm -hmm. because of the information that I had. So which just means wise. I use that word Right, I call our intuition our intuition because you can have an intuitive hit, you can get a little like nudge, 
But if you don't do anything about it, if you don't take action on it, you're always gonna like be kicking yourself. You have to take action. And that's the difference between knowledge and wisdom is how we act, how we embody this information. So when people have a negative connotation, when I first started reclaiming this word and, and utilizing it for myself, which people were using for me before I was willing to say it myself. Mm -hmm. But I have a lot of like Christian friends, you know, but why would you call yourself a witch? That's, that's evil. You know, that's, it's so bad. And I really invite people to think about, okay, well, why do you think it's evil? Mm. Who told you that? Where did they learn that? Because it's really all just from the church. So when you think back, and I don't have anything against Jesus, I love the avatar and energy and teachings of Jesus and Mary Magdalene, his wife and partner in holy healing and miracles. I'm all for that. But the people who speak on his behalf over the last 2000 years, who have stripped us from nature and really made us feel like God is punishing us rather than wanting us to expand and to find the kingdom or queendom of heaven within ourselves, that I don't resonate with. I don't get down with that. And so it's not about Jesus and it's not about the teachings of Christianity because the Christ or the Christed one just means the anointed one or the anointment itself. And the original anointment, the original blood of Christ was actually moon blood, menstrual blood, because it's blood that's shed without violence. Mm. There was no hurt involved. It's like women bleeding from our cauldrons every month. That's a whole nother rabbit hole we could go down, but let's stay where we are for now. So the reason that witches became bad or negative is because they knew the cycles of the moon. So they knew how to grow their food, food, plants, herbs. Those were our medicine. We didn't have modern pharmaceuticals. The only medicine we had came from plants, came from nature. When you look at Disney princesses, all old fairy tales and myths, people have this relationship with animals. They can often communicate with them because I believe that I can have a powerful communicative relationship with animals. I do. I have two cats. I take them on long hikes and walks. They don't need a leash. They come with me. We climb up mountains in Colorado every single day. And I just believed that I could do that with them. And so I did. And now I do every day. And it's magnificent. Fairy tales are one of the only places and ways that our old magic was actually safeguarded and passed down mm. and taught to us. And so we think of like fairy tales as these like fantastical little things, but I was a child who read lots of fairy tales and now my life is magical because I was willing to believe that that was possible. And so because if you grew your own food and your own medicine, you didn't need anyone else. There was no like power over you. Your relationship with God was direct. It was a direct line to the divine. Like it's me and God. It's me and the earth. It's me and the moon. It's me and the waters. You're very hard to control. You're a sovereign being. What do you need to do? You don't need to pay anyone for anything. You don't need to like be told how or what to do with your life. You're just doing it and you're living it. And so when particular people. There's a lot of history we could go in. Like Emperor Constantine was a huge uh, shift in time, like in the early 300s of the current era in the Roman Empire, when he was originally like, hey, polytheistic Roman Empire, right? Like giant pantheon of gods. We're going to be kind to the Christians. We're going we're gonna to welcome them. By the end of his rule, like 35 years later, he'd completely shifted and changed his tune and had been bought out by the Christians. There's like all this evidence of corruption. Again, we could go so much deeper into it. But so he'd been, he'd been bribed basically by this new religion and started confiscating old temples and beautiful places of worship that had once been for the, all of the Roman gods and even like the lineage of Caesars, of, of emperors, of rulers in Rome are said to have come directly from Venus. They are meant to be her descendants like from the goddess herself. And so they began just taking over all these temples and originally it was like, oh, let's give them to the Christians so that they have a place to worship. Great, of course, everyone deserves to have a place of worship. But again, by the end of his reign, he had completely changed his tune and he was outlawing polytheism and, and paganism, which was the 
major religion or spiritual practice of the Roman Empire for its entire history up to that point. And so then by the 15th century, by the 6th century, the Vatican or the Catholic Church had political rule of Rome. And then by the 15th century, they had absolute rule. They were ruling the Roman Empire. Of course, there's a lot of history in there. There's a lot of time that has passed during that period. But they just started taking people's power and magic away from themselves. And tithings, you had to like pay money to get yourself absolved of sins. It wasn't, there was no like healing. It was like, oh, pay, you know, $50 or whatever the Roman currency at that time was in order to, you know, rescue your family from eternal hell. And they're forcing people and taxing people and beating people, taking their children, taking their livestock, taking anything they had, all of their resources, if they didn't pay. And so the alternative was jail or death if you didn't do what the church said. And that's why we have come to have this horrible relationship with witches. Because if you spoke up, if you fought back, if you did anything to say, wait a second, this isn't right, you were the next victim. They were coming to your house and it was going to be your child who was murdered in front of you or it was going to be your entire farm land that they torched and like took you out and locked you up in a in a jail cell and when you really look at the history which is like it's hard ish to find but it's really not like all of the stories i love the william wallace quote from braveheart you know where he says history is written by those who have hanged heroes and it is Oof. And so that's why we think that witches are bad when really we're all witches. We're all wise people. We all have intuition. We all have psychic gifts and abilities. They've just been stripped from us. We all feel those little nudges, that little pull in your gut of something that says, oh, wait, like I should go here. I should go there. But we've been trained not to listen to it. We're not supposed to listen to it because it's evil or it's bad or it's wrong because that's what keeps us powerless and that's what keeps us easily manipulated and that's what keeps us buying and consuming and like trying to fill the void that is just a vacuum of power, our own eternal infinite power that comes from the earth and from the sun and from the wind and from a connection to those elements. And so again, wisdom is just, embodied life experience and so everyone is a witch everyone every single person on the planet no matter your gender or your color or your shape or where you're from and you know shamans priestesses curanderas everybody they're all just operating from their experience of wisdom and what that means and looks Mm -hmm. like and so i think it's a it's a beautiful opportunity now in this time to be reclaiming this word because why would we want our wisdom taken from us why would we want imagine like witches were the healers they were the doctors imagine if all of a sudden we were like oh my god all the doctors are so evil like lock up the doctors burn all the doctors like we cannot have doctors here ever again like doctors are the worst thing ever everyone would be like the fuck so the only way you could perpetuate an idea that is that outrageous is through violence Mm -hmm. and like look at the crusades you know the christian crusades in like the 1300s look what was done with the cathars the people who were continuing the lineage of mary magdalene and jesus's Mm -hmm. teachings they were like holding true to what jesus had taught they were you know and we call them christians now because they were they were like holding the true teachings of the kingdom of heaven is within you love thy neighbor as yourself all of these beautiful, like more esoteric spiritual teachings that those of us who read anything in this modern day, we see it and it's very obvious. Those are, you know, Gnostic, Christian, mystic teachings that were changed by the people who took over and just got greedy and just wanted money and wanted to rule. Like, you look at all the gold in the Vatican, guess where that came from? Raping and pillaging and pilfering South America. And we colonized the whole world and outlawed hula and outlawed dialects and languages. It was done most recently to the First Nations people of the Americas, right? And especially like in North America that happened so much later. The reservations, these awful schools, like you can't speak your language. I mean, it's so obvious that it's 
filled and fueled by hatred and pain and, and inner anguish, right? It's only hurt people who hurt people like mm -hmm. that. It's people who mm -hmm. feel empty or not enough that would do that to someone else instead of being like, oh, I'm happy with myself. So if you're happy with yourself and you like your spiritual practice, you just keep on doing your thing. It's so obvious. Like if you're good within yourself, you don't ever need to call anyone else evil or like attack the way that they're doing their thing. You're like, I'm good. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. And so to me, it just seems, so, and it always was from the time I was a little girl, even when we would go to church, I just didn't understand why there was this attack on other people that never made sense to me. And, and so like more and more as I grew up, my, my family, we, it was like nature was the temple. And I've experienced even being in places like Bali where they, you know, I was all wrapped up. I thought I was good. And they were like, nope, you get out, get out of here. You can't be in this temple. Go, 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 go. And this big, beautiful mango tree, like one of those huge mango trees, I walked out and she said, come here to me, child. I will be your temple and you are always welcome here. You know, because that's how it's meant to be. That's how a relationship to God, to nature is meant to be. We're, we all are welcome or else we wouldn't have been created. We wouldn't be here. And so to me, the opportunity is really to look at the fact that the evilness of which, which means wisdom, the evilness of wisdom, even like the tree of knowledge, right? Like eating the apple, being tempted by seeing yourself as God, by knowing your kundalini serpentine energy and the power inside of you and your pussy and your womb and your spine and, you know, the energetic womb within men and, and non-binary people. It's all just so obvious. It's right here in front of our faces, but we've just been prevented from talking about seeing the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, as you're speaking, one of the things that really comes up for me um, is, so I, I was born in Rome, just a stone's toss from wow. the Vatican. And um, obviously raised Roman Catholic, you know? And, and, wow. and again, even when I go back to Italy, which is one of my home bases, since, mm. since that's where I'm originally from, even where I stay now is still within the energetic field of the Vatican. So it's, it's really interesting because even when I'm, I'm in the apartment, I'm like, oh, I can feel like the shockwaves mm, mm. <laughs> that, that are coming from, from that space. It's very strong. And one of the things that I remember like growing up Roman Catholic and there's a certain very heavy conditioning and being 14 years old and just being telling my mom, I'm not, I'm not this, I'm not this, I can't do it, I won't do it. And intuitively, I just knew that I couldn't, it was so strong in me. And as a 14 year old, I had no idea, but I, I just knew that it, it couldn't identify with that. And, you know, in this work that we do, when, when we're going through our awakening, it's really around seeing the layers in which we've been conditioned, both personal, familial, societal, and cultural. Yeah. And many times I've needed to come face to face with um, this, this, this part of me, you know, yeah. this part that is, that, you know, you catch yourself in these moments where you're not even questioning something or you're like, oh yeah, it's this way because it is this way. And then someone's like, but is it though? You know, and then you wake up and you realize, wait, hold on. I was taking this for granted. And I know, you know, for myself, it's this, this, um, it, this, this stripping a way that it is so deeply embedded in our culture and I feel close to it just because of where I was born and um, of the ancestry that I carry in my veins and um, you know what, what you're saying around the kingdom within and just this constant externalization of who we are like outside God is not here it's out there yeah um, you know your heaven is not here it's over there after you die um, you know your, your your union is not here it's over there in in if you find somebody yeah, if that person else. can mm -hmm. you need to demand it from them right and and it's like it's not here it's there like your abundance is not here it's in the car you it's not here it's in the bag <laughs> It's not here. It's in this thing that you own. And one of the mm. pieces of this puzzle that's been very um, key to my personal journey, I know this to be true, has been to consistently come back to know it's here. And even nature, nature's there and it's here. 
the connection is here. You know, you were saying in the beginning, like the rivers in your vein, and and uh, and you know, like the I forgot what you said the about bones the bones are the stones and the are mountains. the stones and the mountains, and realizing that, and and this is what I'm finding in my own awakening journey, in my own becoming of self, and 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 allowing myself to rise into the soul that I'm destined to be here and now is really this acknowledgement that whatever it is that I'm seeking is here and it's seeking me here and now. And so it's, it's really beautiful to, to hear that because even though there's a lot of tragedy and there's a lot of pain and there's a lot of anguish was the word that you shared with us that, that comes from this externalization and this like separation that we've experienced of our own power, there's the importance of, of knowing and understanding that. And one of the things I've been um, consistently practicing in my own self is, and, and how do I remember that it's actually all here now and how can I keep coming back to understanding that whatever thing I'm feeling disempowered from is just an illusion and it's just patterns and conditioning and that's always my ethos. It's it's happening for me, it's all supporting and it's all within me. So whatever is not flowing and whatever is is not actually happening in the way that I want it to happen, it's, it's, just, it's just needing a reprogram and an opening and the answer is always coming back to love. It's always coming back to nature. It's always finding it within and returning back to my own wisdom mm -hmm. and letting my intuition be the one that's leading me because that's that's that is my guide through this path um, that I call my soul destiny and so it's really beautiful to hear the way that you're saying it because it really brings this entire piece together and this deconstruction of the word witch that has so much wounding and so much charge around it mm -hmm. but it, it does come down to like this is about us tapping into our wisdom and re-establishing our relationship with the planet and yeah. even beyond that, our relationship with our own power and the divine that exists within us. So um, yeah, so I really love the way that you put that all together and that's how I interpreted as well what you shared. So with um, all that said, there's something else that I really wanted to to discuss with you and I know that we were talking about offline and you know part of this episode is that guests have the option to come in and receive some laser coaching and for us to like deconstruct certain things that might be um, needing more attention or, or like just basically anything that might be sticky that can be open and show people what it really looks like to work through that in real time. So um, I remember you had shared something with us and I was wondering if you'd be willing to, to share with us and, and, and let's break it down together and um, see what our viewers can take away from it as well. Yeah. So even after a decade of spiritual work and being a leader in the reclamation of the witch, everybody still has patriarchal programming in them. Everybody still hits up against bumps and blockages. And even as a successful spiritual CEO at this point and running a full-time team and like crushing it and having a book coming out in January and all the things. Something that I have been noticing lately or something that has been really up in my business and in my life is that I have been deferring to my CMO, my chief marketing officer, who's the only man on my team, has been one of my best friends for 10 years literally let me live in his guest room when I was broke and didn't have anywhere else to go and couldn't afford rent, has seen me frolicking around his backyard naked with moon blood all over my face multiple times and is one of my greatest supports in this lifetime, is truly my brother and just a dear soul family member. And he's a man. And he's incredibly good at his marketing creative direction job title and when he came into my business a year ago, he has ideas. He has things he wants to do. He has ways of doing them. He has like, it's supposed to be like this. We build it like this. You need to do this. And I love him. I care about him. I don't want to disappoint him. I'm so grateful. It's a fucking miracle that I went from, you know, living in his guest room to being one of the CEOs that he supports. And so there is this part of me that still defers to him to the detriment of either my health or my stress or my sense of well-being or even just like how I want to do things. I built 
a very, very successful, large, beautiful business and following by doing basically nothing except whatever the fuck I wanted on my own time, following my highest excitement, like <laughs> traveling wherever I wanted, whatever retreat and like a four hour work week max. I was like, mm -hmm. I'm not willing to work more than four hours. This year I have worked like 15 hour days, just day, <laughs> many times. I've worked seven days a week, many times. I've been writing a book and running this business and this team and speaking at events and doing podcasts and all the things. And I'm tired mm -hmm. and I'm stressed and I'm, I'm still like, you know, making the time to go out into nature. Thank the goddess. Cause I wouldn't have survived this if I wasn't, mm -hmm. but I have not figured out where or how the patriarchal programming within me is still, I mean, like you can tell, like I'm assertive. I'm intense. I say what I want. I do what I want. I get what I want. Mm -hmm. But there has been something off in that where I have been afraid to say no or afraid to like say yes only to the thing that I want to say yes to. Or there's a story of like, oh, but he's built so many successful multi-million dollar businesses. He knows better than I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even though I've built <laughs> everything I have and gotten all these incredible four project book deal from Hay House when everybody told me I wasn't going to do it as a first time author and all the things like just amazing manifestations. I'm a master manifester. Mm -hmm. And so I'm the, the place where I have been feeling a little lost is like how or what is this thing where I feel of like a very balanced masculine and feminine being mm -hmm. I serve the goddess, but I am direct and I am motivated and I'm doing my ambitious thing, but I've lost or momentarily misplaced <laughs> the diligent and perhaps almost delusional devotion to my way and doing it my way, not the way anybody else says, not the way it's supposed to be. I've never listened to that before, not once in my life. And that's how I got where I am. Mm -hmm. And somehow something is happening where I've been compromising mm -hmm. on that. And so now like my health is feeling compromised mm -hmm. and I just haven't been feeling as good. And I haven't, yeah, I've, I've never been like so stressed out mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. just didn't used to live like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's a big piece yeah. that I'm Thank you for sharing. Yeah. And, you know, I'm so grateful that you're being vulnerable and open about this because I know, and I have chills when I say that, there's so many women, mm -hmm. I can tell you 100% because I work with a lot of them, is that <laughs> they're thinking that they don't want to talk about it and they don't want to admit it yeah. because they don't want, you know, how could I be successful and have built so much but also have this, right? So that yeah. it gets snuck under um, the carpet very, very often. So I'm really grateful that you are opening up about this. Yeah. And are you open to just exploring a couple pathways yeah, here let's now? Go. Yeah. yeah? <laughs> okay. So um, the first piece is, you know, what's really curious about is when you were speaking into um, your CMO, what I was tracking into was almost like there's a string of, um, the word is similar to obligation. It's almost mm. this like, ownership of like he supported you he did this he helped you he did so much for you yeah. of course i need to listen to him so that's what i'm mm -hmm. seeing like and i'm yeah. spotting in the subconscious there's almost this um sense of because i was taken care of yeah. and because i was seen and it's coming from if i disregard him place. i'm dis disrespecting him yeah mm -hmm. so that's the first piece if i disregard him i'm disrespecting him yeah. And that's also like, I'd be curious if we were to open that box up, why would, why would, why is it being called disrespect? And if it was disrespect, where is it that you're taking issue? Yeah. How I perceive it is that it's like, it's like shitting on his wisdom mm -hmm. or it's like, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I did this like this, you know, and it's kind of like sassy and rude mm -hmm. as opposed to deeply appreciative and reverent, which is what he deserves. Mm -hmm. And even though like I had a conversation with him and I said like, I don't want to disappoint you. And he's like, Mia, like I'm here for you and for this because I believe in you and I believe in your message and I believe in what you're doing. Like I love mm -hmm. you and I'm there for you no matter what. 
I want this business to be successful. And so I know that I wouldn't disappoint him. But I, yeah, I think it's the deeper piece is like, well, I don't know. I don't know. What never, don't you know? I've never run a million dollar business before. Like I was a little mm -hmm. broke hippie, like fluffing around, you know, mm -hmm. just like wanting to live a magical life. People were laughing at me. People thought that what I believed in was ridiculous. My whole life, like, because mm -hmm. I was like this. I, had, I was like this until sixth grade, totally mag magical, totally fantastical, totally connected to the fairies and all of the elemental realms and like believed in magic until I went to public school. They told me I was a fucking loser and I, you know, just hated me, rejected me. So that happened until like, you know, my early 20s when I was like, okay, I'm going to believe in magic again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm and like saved my own life, thank the goddess. And then over the last decade, I've just been believing in magic more and more and more, but there is this part of me that, yeah, what I can feel right now coming up is like, well, he must know better than me because mm -hmm. how could I know because I've never run a business before and I built this business on like candle spells and sex magic and spending time in nature. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like he knows better. And so if I disrespect his knowing better then I'm like, you know, disregarding, yeah, like kind of the, the masculine God or the like the patriarchy really. But he, you know, he doesn't represent the patriarchy to me, obviously, yeah. but like within all of us, you know, we can, we can project yeah. that onto yeah. a man and like put that on them, yeah. even if they don't deserve it. So what are you actually disregarding then? What would you be disregarding? Oh, I'm disregarding my own intuition and my own desires. That's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're disregarding it because? Because I don't trust it all the way with this, or I don't trust that I know best or that I know better. There's a mm -hmm. story that like he knows better than me, and that's why I have to listen to him. Mm -hmm. Because how the fuck would I know how to be running a multi million dollar business? Okay. Like, and that story, why is it there? I'm feeling two threads. I'm like feeling the kids at public school that like yep. when I came in yep. being like, I believe in magic. They were like, magic's for babies and you're a loser. I can feel that one. And then like at the beginning of starting my business, you know, my parents had a lot of stories around like, you can't be a fucking, like, what is a life coach? Like, you can't do that. And, mm -hmm. and a couple of like kind of traumatic events between me and my dad where he was like, you don't know shit about business. Like, you don't know fucking anything. And now I'm like, guess how much money I made last month? You never even made that mm -hmm. much in a year. Like, mm -hmm. suck it, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bless my dad, but you know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that that comes up. So yeah, I can feel like the kids who told me that b believing in magic wasn't, wasn't legit and that like, yeah, even though my parents did it their way, and did their own thing as entrepreneurs that there's this like, you don't know shit about business mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so stay there. These two mm -hmm. threads are important. Mm -hmm. So the first thread that you just, I'm gonna go with the one around mm -hmm. um, your father and your parents. Just, I want yeah. you to just bring your awareness and light up that story mm -hmm. with seeing and understanding the way that your parents had in these, this program in you that like you can, sure you can be successful, sure you can money, but what are you doing, a life coach? Like what's happening? So just notice the stickiness. Like I can feel that you're there right now and you can actually, you're, you're in a space in your conscious awareness where you can just shed light on it and start to dissolve it. But start to notice the ways that your parents instilled programs in you that yes, you can make money, but hey, there's conditions, there's strings attached. And one of those strings is not you being a life coach. And notice that. And what I also want you to notice as you're noticing that and just expanding and breathing into that and allowing that story to start to dissolve is also the anger that's present around the male figure that we're going to call mm -hmm. your dad in mm -hmm. this moment mm -hmm. around him putting restrictions on you about how you can make that money. And notice the pushback that's been installed around, well, you know what? I'm going to do it my way. Yeah. And so it's really, yeah. it's, ahead. it's shifting because there's a yeah. piece because yeah. something that happened to my dad was he did exactly this. Like he ended up taking on capital from a venture fund and giving away 50% of his company. And uh -huh. then they wanted to sell it and yeah. he would never, he would have my parents invented roof racks. He would have run that business 
until the day he died. It was yeah. his purpose. It was his dharma. It was his destiny. He fucking loved it so much. And because he'd sold 50% of the company, maybe like 51 and they outvoted him, something yeah. like that, he, he lived his whole life on his own terms and his yeah. way. And then they told him he couldn't anymore and he sold it and it fucking ruined him. Yeah. It ruined him. And so I can feel, and that happened like when I was like 12 or 13. Yeah. And so I watched him, you know, um, acquiesce to someone else, to someone else's ideas, to someone else's desires, to someone else's shoulds and supposed tos. Yeah. And, and then he became someone that I didn't respect. Mm. He became someone that I looked at and I was, I just pitied. I was just like, oh, mm -hmm. you're a loser. Like what do you have to show for yourself now? And, and he just, he had nothing. Mm -hmm. He had money in the bank, but he was empty and he was depressed and he was sad and he didn't know what to do with himself, you know, and he was f like 45 years old when mm -hmm. he retired, something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, mm -hmm. and I was like disgusted with that. So I can feel this like simultaneous, you know, he was sort of telling me that I didn't know anything about business, but then I watched him lose track of what he did know, which was like to always follow his mm -hmm. gut and always follow his intuition and always do it his way. Cause he was so successful doing it his way and then doing it anyone else's way is what, is what took all of his dreams from him. Mm -hmm. And so, that was disappointing. And that was like repulsive, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. So notice how the sequence of his experience and him and this pain that happened in his life then got transferred into you as you cannot right? And him, what you're saying, him saying no to his soul dharma and uh, receiving the consequences of that. Notice how that translated into a man who may, might, you know, this big thing happened, didn't have the tools, didn't have the capacity, yeah. didn't know how to deal with it. And so one of the easiest way to do that is to see someone that, you know, he, his child and to protect you from that. And ironically, you know, that's what happens sometimes is we want to protect people and we really want the best, but because we don't have the right tools or we don't have the knowledge, we're doing the best with what we have. Um, it can get corrupted and notice how that transference of his experience into your life, it translated into, well, you, you can't be a witch or you can't be any of it. You can't follow your path Dharma because what if you get ruined too? Oof. Right. Oh. You feel that? If you do that, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you do this, then you're gonna have my experience. Yeah, you're gonna and get ruined. You're going like to get me. ruined. So don't do that. So can you feel that? Can you track that? Yeah. And you know, I don't know anything of your relationship with your dad, and we don't have to open it here. But just track into whatever the relationship actually is. If you can find that string, which I know you're already, I can already feel you're connecting to, of compassion for this man who had a series of life events happen um, in the way that they did. And you know, again, it's his life. It's not your fault or responsibility, but that has happened. And as a result, he lived a series of experience, which unfortunately then, um, you know, when he's seeing his child is translating into him wanting to protect, but not in the way that is empowering you. It's in a way that's disrespect, disempowering you. And what I want you also to bring your attention to is you use the word respect again, right? And respect and disrespect is the exact word that's coming up when it comes to your CMO as well. Mm. So just keep um, note of that and keep tracking that. And are you seeing it now? Are you feeling your father and you're feeling what the pattern actually is. Totally. And as you're doing that and as you're feeling into that, using your choice and your power and sound breath and movement, you actually have the choice to go ahead and dissolve that story now. Yeah. And give that back respectfully, lovingly, and you know, with mm. that's it. You got it. Just return that to him and know that him telling you you couldn't has nothing to do with you. And that child, that young Mia who didn't know any of this, didn't know how to receive this. She accepted unconsciously a program mm. around, I can't be who I really am. I can't do what I really want. And there was a, and here's what I want you to feel into as well. I'm gonna bring you into the next piece, which is a defense, defense mechanism was created back then that has been powered by anger. And notice the pattern that's coming up again in your situation right now around, you know what, screw you, I can do it my way, stomp, stomp. I'm gonna do it exactly my way and you don't have a say. And now here's what's important to be present with. 
you can do it your way. It's not mutually exclusive. It can be your way. It can be magically exactly your way. And I want you to just take notice of the shadow side that gets really reactive and angry when a man comes in, tries to tell you you can't do it a certain way, and then wants to fight back. So just bringing awareness of that because it is creating a separation within you that doesn't need to be exist to exist. It's creating an illusion of you either do it your way or you listen to a man. And then you, you get to have the results that you want because he has certain results and that's the patriarchy. Mm. But can we start to open that space within you that I can feel you're connecting into? Opening up that space to the possibility and potentiality that you can do it your way and there's space for masculine structure and love and guidance and you always get to choose whether you're going to take it or not. And mm -hmm. it is never at the detriment of you. Mm -hmm. There's so much value and wisdom in, in, in the male wisdom and the male and you, you don't have to take all of it. Mm -hmm. And you definitely don't need to accept the projections and you definitely do not need to take if there's an obligation that you have created that's being attached because that creates a cord that does not need to be there. Mm -hmm. So as you're feeling into all of that, there's one more piece, but as you're feeling into all of that, what is rearranging itself for you? Oh, I mean, just the whole narrative, like seeing like he, him yelling, it, it wasn't so much you can't, but it was the you don't know shit about business thing, like him saying that to me. Yeah. That was just him like yelling at himself mm -hmm. that he didn't know anything about business and, and that's why he lost his own. Like that's why he lost what happened for him is because if he had known, he never would have given away 51% mm -hmm. for money. He would have like stayed as the controlling shareholder so that he could keep doing whatever he wanted his way and keep building that business for, you know, in perpetuity. And so just seeing like he was mad at himself. He was so mad at himself for giving up on his way and his dreams. And that's why he said that to me and mm -hmm. was like sad and disappointed at that. And then, yeah, just that I'm, I'm putting that onto my CMO and making it about, I don't know shit about business, but he's actually not saying that to me. He actually came on to help me because he loves what I've done with my business without listening to any of the any things that you're supposed to do. Nothing. I didn't even have an email list till this year. <laughs> and yeah, just seeing the way that I allowed that story to inform the dynamic between the two of us, whereas like I built everything I have by doing it my way and that that's what my... Yeah, my dad was just trying to protect me from, mm -hmm. from losing everything because he put his identity into his business. Mm -hmm. And I, like, my business is literally my name. It's I am my brand. And so I'm even more deeply invested in it as a, in, personally. And he just wanted to protect me from, yeah, the, the, the anguish. Mm and the despair that he felt when he lost like his creation, his legacy. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, and he saw us stop respecting him so much and he saw his community stop respecting him so much and he saw, you know, friends disappear and yeah, he, he, and ultimately he just didn't respect himself anymore. Mm -hmm. And the empath, in you and the lover in you saw that and mm -hmm. felt that and felt the pain in his heart for not having the, the, the respect. And I can see that even with this current CMO, how important it is for you to have him feel respected because you feel in your heart the pain of a man who has gone through that. Yeah. Oh, dagger. Yes. Yeah. So true. The pain of a man who's gone through that and is walking a life feeling like he's dis he's disrespecting himself and being disrespected by the people whose respect he most wishes for. You know that pain, you have felt it empathically, right? And so with this I watched man, it, I yeah, you finished watched high it school happen. with it in the house you every day. You watched it happen, you watched that this, this disintegration happen, and so there is that part of you that so deeply wants to ensure that your CMO 
remains feeling respected because you don't want to put him through that pain. Mm. And so that's creating a heightened level of sensitivity when it comes to working with him. Mm. So now that you're seeing this pattern, you can go ahead and you can give that back mm -hmm. in love and compassion. And there's one more piece here, which is the second story and the second string that you picked up on, which is that young Mia, mm -hmm. who was such a magical, beautiful, mm -hmm. like fairy creature. Creature. <laughs> yeah, fairy creature. I see her here mm. and now with us, um, this beautiful little fairy creature that is like straight out of like, you know, <laughs> um, what's it, Snow White. And uh, and um, just seeing her More like go, Pocahontas. Pocahontas, okay. Pocahontas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll, we'll give you Pocahontas. Okay, and thanks. then just seeing her go through the pain of being plugged into a patriarchal system and basically having her magic stripped away from her. And part of your passion and your purpose and the way why you understand this so intimately is because of the way that it happened to you and the way you've had to reclaim yourself to remember your magic again is part of what makes you so amazing. And it's part of what you, allows you to be able to give that to people is because you had to build it back up every block. And what I just want to bring your attention to here is not just the, the, the rebuilding, which is something that is something to be so deeply proud of, but also the, the rage and the grief that came with, y'all stripped me of this, mm. screw you, I'm gonna show you what I can do, and I'm gonna build this business my way, stomp, stomp, and I'm gonna screw you all, like, see, ha, 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 like, right? So there's a, Look there's at a me little, now, there, witch. Yeah, yeah, there's a little <laughs> bit of a, <laughs> there's a little bit of a badass witch there. <laughs> And there's, there's, but there's a shadow component mm. here that's present with us that's really like, you know what? Like, no, I did this. I did it my way. And, and just paying attention to that anger and allowing it to integrate back in. Because of course, again, similar to this example with your dad, beneath this anger is like a strong, fiery passion to support people, to reclaim their power, to support people, to do things their way. You're, that's part of your work. It's part of your mission is to support people to not do it a cookie cutter way, not do it the patriarchal way, but to do it your way and take notice of the places and spaces where that desire, that ardent fire that is within you is starting to burn in a bit of a shadow manner, right? And just reintegrating it back in. Yeah, I've never had an issue being seen or... Like I obviously I had that long period where I didn't see myself, but mm -hmm. I always saw myself before that and I mm -hmm. definitely see myself now. It feels more like a broader spectrum of seeing that is more like the magic itself and it is the mm. earth. It's more like, how can people not fucking see this? Mm -hmm. How can I be sitting next to grown adults in first class on an airplane who are playing fucking Angry Birds and Candy Crush for an entire five hour flight? Like, that's where the fuck you, you idiots. Like, I can feel that like kind of evil queen energy. Mm -hmm. Like, she just wants to vaporize those people. Like, then get off this planet mm -hmm. if you can't see how beautiful she is. You know, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. people who fly the entire flight without looking out at the clouds or the stars or the land beneath them. Like, I've been flying, you know, <laughs> five or six times a month lately. And so I just, I've seen a lot of zombies. Mm -hmm. and, and those were the people that made fun of me and didn't, mm. see, and it wasn't about seeing me, it was about seeing the magic itself, the magic of life, the magic of nature, the magic of the elements, the magic that they too had. They didn't mm -hmm. see their own magic. They didn't see magic or power or beauty in life, period. Mm. And mm -hmm. that that does like enrage me uh, because okay. I feel like this planet deserves so much more from there. us. There, let's pause there because now I, I, I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> that rage, notice what you were saying before and you were when you were very angry and yeah. you were like, I am working too many hours, I'm doing this, mm. I'm disconnected, mm. I still mm. make time for nature, but it's not. Mm. Notice that, mm. that's the mm. same thing here. Mm. And this is why it's so important for you to be doing this your own way because when you're not, you're disconnecting from that and that rage again. And I'm being like those people. Being, yes, there you are. That's it. Ooh. You got it. <laughs> Where's my bucket? <laughs> what is that? Yeah. Mm. That's self-rage. Yeah. yeah. 
and, and the, the honoring the, this very <clears throat> that you're feeling. Yeah, feeling like a muggle. This is the fire that you need to be bringing into your situation right now and you must, must reclaim and call back your, your time, as we were saying before. More nature. Remember one hour? Make it two. <laughs> right? right? Yeah. We're taking our own advice. Always, right? aren't we? One hour, um, make it two. And yeah. what needs to happen now so that those, no to those 14 hours. Yeah. No to that because you know you have the codex and you know that you can do it your way. And yeah. you're seeing now the ways that the conditioning that was there that you're clearing now was creating this dynamic for you where you believed that you needed to defer to your CMO. But what you're actually seeing now, hopefully, is that he seems like he's wonderful and he seems like he actually completely believes in you. And so when we strip back the projections and we strip back the conditioning and we look at where this rage is coming from and the ways that you yourself need to reclaim yourself within your own business at this deeper level, you don't know how to run a, a million dollar business. This is, this is the how, this is it. This is you evolving into that version of you and remembering and reclaiming what it looks like for you now in the unknown. So with all of these pieces together, if we start to, to come back into the situation that you described at the beginning and we start to look at it again, knowing what you know now, what do you see? Oh, just like so much ease and, yeah. and like, sorry, we're doing it my way. Yeah. That's why the goddess has blessed me with all of this because my way is the new way. And, um, and not like there's like right or wrong, but my way is the right way for me. A oh, wow. Yep, chills. Yeah, feel that. And I'm not <sighs> willing <laughs> in any way to compromise the incredible blessing and magic and abundance and beauty and power and pleasure and fucking orgasmic nature of my life for anything because that's why I'm a leader and that's why the goddess keeps blessing me and that's why I have the path that I do and that's why I've been given the business that I have and that's why I didn't have to do anything that anyone else had to do to build it. I just got to believe in magic and say yes to my inner child and give her everything that she wanted and keep making her dreams and fantasies come to fruition and to reality. Mm -hmm. My way is the right way for me. Yes. And now that you've arrived here and we look at what needs to happen next, if we bring it into actionability, what conversations you need to have, what things you need to tell. Oh yeah, he told me that. today, we had a big meeting before yeah. this. He told me today, he's like, we're not launching anything during Burning Man. And I was like, I don't care. My astrologer said that those are the best days, I'm doing it. And he was like, nope, absolutely not. I'm putting up a hard no and like, that's the thing that, and so I kind of was like, okay, well, we'll talk about it, but like nobody gets to put up hard nose except me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like using some of that dragon fire and a little like, if I'm gonna stomp, stomp, it's gonna be to protect my inner child and to protect mm -hmm. my body mm -hmm. and to care for like the planetary expression and emanation of Gaia that is the blood in my veins and the breath in my lungs and the bones in my mountains. Like this is what I'm safeguarding. Mm -hmm. And that the more that people like me and all of us can do this and tend to this holy temple and sacred vessel and expression of the elements and the earth, the more the earth herself will be cared for and tended to with reverence mm -hmm. and honor and, and being heard and listened to. Beautiful. And if nobody else is going to do it, like yeah. I, of course, have to lead the way and be the example and the role model because that's what I came here to do. Beautiful. Well, it sounds like before you were a little lost, mm. but that doesn't sound like it anymore. So what's the way forward? <laughs> there you are. Ta-da. So what's now, now what? What's the way forward? Mm, As it comes to your situation. Welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> Just doing it my way. Yeah. Just doing it my way on my time, the way I want. Always. Yeah. I built this business with one employee, mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. me and her, mm -hmm. and just my intuition. And yeah. that's all really that I need. Mm -hmm. And if you were to, you know, for people who are like, well, what, she's, what's, what is she going to do with the CMO? What are you going to do now? 
Is it an open conversation or like, oh, what does yeah, it look I'm like? just going to talk to him. Beautiful. And I'm just like, that's why I'm the CEO. That's why I'm the president. That's why I'm the boss. That's why I'm the content creator. He can't make me create anything I don't want to create. Beautiful. And yeah, I already, I, I really like came, you know, it was just my birthday a couple days ago and, and I, that was a big, I had a big process around my dad, but this definitely like created more clarity around the actual narrative and how it was happening. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, the, as it came on my birthday was like, my dad lost himself by not doing things his way. And I will only continue to find myself by doing things my way, mm -hmm. always over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And I will never let myself be ruined by compromise. So there you go. Yeah, that was fast. <laughs> it's great. I'm here for it. <laughs> yeah, amazing. I love it. So yeah. what would you say based on that? What are the, this is more so also for people listening and yeah. you know, you went through an entire internal journey. Um, what would be your top key takeaways? I mean, pretty much just the things that I've said. I like, you know, like you said, the one hour versus, you know, two hours in nature. Yeah. Like the only thing I can do really is it's not like going back, but it does feel like bringing forward into my time now into like being a spiritual CEO as opposed to like a broke hippie who was like trying to use these practices to, to change and heal and transform now that I am who I wanted to be and who I can like show my inner child and visions. I like show her my life and I show her all the things we're doing. I'm like, look at this. She's like, oh my fucking God. She's like, loses her shit. She's so excited. It's, I'm literally her dreams come true. It's really just a matter of bringing the practices that got me here forward. And instead of thinking that I need to change more and like do the business stuff to be surviving or continuing to create and grow from this point, it's actually just bringing the old ways that I got here into the, into what I'm doing now. Oh yeah. If I want to have a eight hour morning routine and it's all day and all I'm doing is dancing and yoga and singing and chanting and playing my drum and doing sex magic and de-armoring my pussy and fucking laying with my womb on the earth for four hours, then like, that's what I'm going to do. And that's a great day. And that is fucking productivity. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. That's all I need to do. You know, mm -hmm. it's really like, that's how I got here. And I never sacrificed those days. Every single day I did exactly what I wanted. And that didn't involve a lot of time on the computer. And I can still manifest everything and anything that I mm -hmm. want without spending much time on my computer. I know I can because I already did it. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Well, I'm so glad because this the whole journey, this, we took a look mini journey, but yeah. I, I know that this is so valuable. Just like seeing the internal workings of how you just work through that in real time is incredible. So I'm really excited for you to go off and, and Thanks, not have please. the point. Yeah. But, but to go and reclaim that and just come yeah. back, come right, snap right back into the, the path. So yeah. yay. Hallelujah. I'm so glad Thanks, we got sis. to do yeah, yeah, of course. My pleasure. So um, we are going to start wrapping up today because that was a lot for people. And I know that they're going to like, this is one of those episodes that I feel like you could listen to multiple times. Yeah, and get, get more nuggets. nuggets. Every single time. But before we start to wrap things up, um, I was wondering if there was any closing or final things that you wanted to share with whoever's listening. Yeah, I think that all of that, like the experience, one, you know, there's a lot of people in the spiritual community or like influencers, le leaders, teachers that might not want to show you that like might not want to mm -hmm. admit to having a, a problem or an issue or a challenge because they want to sell you things or they want you to buy into them being an expert or their perfection. It's all a fucking illusion. Everybody has shit. Everybody has things that they're dealing with. Everyone has growth edges. And so just know that we're all, no matter how successful you are, you're still going to have moments like that. And so I'm really grateful that I feel so in integrity and so brave. Like I'm such a bad bitch all day, every day, because I'm willing to do things like that. And I'm willing to show myself and my truth. And I find that people feel really resonant with you when you're willing to just not be perfect. So like, don't ever try to pretend like you're perfect because nobody is and everybody's going to know you're full of shit. <laughs> so that's number one. And number two is truly with the planet. You want money, you want partnership, you want a new home, you want a new purpose or career, go and talk to the mother 
go and connect with nature. Go find a tree or a mountain or a lake or a plant, a flower that you feel drawn to and listen to it. See what it has to say. See if it has any guidance for you. It always will. I have a free practice we can put in the show notes. Mm -hmm. um, that's I use this all the time and I just call upon the dragons, the redwoods, my higher self, Mother Earth, please write to me, through me, anything I'm meant to receive in this moment, that will change your life. And listen to what it tells you. Follow the invitations. And remember that you are a reflection of the elements. You are the earth and the wind and the water and the fire in every single moment of your life and you can work with those elements within and all around you to heal, to transform, to manifest anything you desire. And I believe that if all of us as a species will change even just that single awareness, we could be living in the new earth, in heaven on earth, having the kingdom or queendom of heaven within ourselves within the next decade easy. Mm -hmm. We just have to make new choices and it, it really is up to us. And it takes those hard moments. It takes being willing to dive in, being willing to heal, being willing to be vulnerable, asking for support and not just trying to do it alone because we really are in this together. And the more magic you cultivate with others, the more magic you'll experience within yourself. Mm -hmm. Beautifully said. And last but not least, if um, for people who want to learn more about you yeah. and want to dive into your world, mm -hmm. where can we find you? So my Instagram, YouTube, and website is all Mia Magic, M-I-A-M-A-G-I-K. It's the only one. There's only one of me. There's a lot of like scammers out there on the internet, but it's the only one. Uh, my book, Intuition, is coming out so you can learn the secret language of the universe and reclaim your inner magic on January 30th of 2024. I have an Oracle deck coming out in October. Lots of things. I have an amazing retreat in Scotland. I lead retreats at castles. That's basically like coming to Hogwarts for a week from October 9th through 14th. And all of the magic, whether it's like baby dragon energy or big dragon energy, is available on miamagic.com. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mia, for coming yeah, today, for thanks, being Queen. vulnerable, and for sharing your magic with us. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. <laughs> thanks, sis. <laughs> Thank you, beautiful humans, for tuning in to today's episode of It's Not What You Think. If you loved what you received today, make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on future episodes and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts as it helps us reach even more amazing listeners like you. If we aren't already connected on social media, come receive even more tips and inspiration by following me on Instagram at Celine DaCosta or visiting my website at CelineDaCosta.com. After listening to this episode, I invite you to take a few moments to reflect. What stood out to you? What were your key takeaways or breakthroughs? And if there was one action step you could take from this, what would it be? Thank you again for joining me on this journey. I'm sending you so much love and I can't wait to connect in the next episode. Until then, keep sharing your unique gifts and living out your most magical life.